Lord, I need you. Say some. Say, Holy Spirit, you are my sweetest star. You are my dearest one. Say, Holy Spirit, say, take over. Take charge. Take all the glory. Say, Holy Spirit, give me understanding and I shall live in Jesus' name. Can I get an amen? amen. We are continuing with our series on sacrificing to raise more laborers. Sacrificing for more laborers. Amen and amen. You must love the series of God's word. Some people love series on Netflix. Some people also love the drink called series. But you must love the word of God which is preached also in series. Amen. Ask somebody, do you love the series of God's word? Amen. Please be seated. I have a short time. And we will take our communion. And Friday, God, we are going to continue with the all night. It will be our third all night to the glory of God. Amen and amen. John chapter 21 verse 15. Amen and amen. amen. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, I'm reading 15 and you read 16. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than this? Thou lovest me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. You see why I love feeding the people of God? Because I love God. This morning, when I was worshiping, I got to a point of the worship and I was, I was just saying it in cheap because, you know, some words, they are very, very, it, it, they come out well when they are in your local dialect. Am I communicating here? It was all, at the point I was watching, I said, Jesus, I love you so much. It, it couldn't go the way I wanted it to go. And I'm serious to me, I'm a pearl. A pearl. A pearl. I said too much. You see? And I felt that my heart was at peace. My heart was at rest. Because I'd, I'd been able to express something. Yeah. Ope from the word Ope. Hallelujah. And uh, and it was just an amazing thing. And if you love God, He said, You love me, then feed my lambs. Amen and amen. So if you love God, you will not just say it, you would actually show it by feeding. If you are not feeding, you are not loving. If there is nobody you are raising for God, you don't love him. Please, you can talk, 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 talk. Lord, I love you. Lord, no, I love you. It's not true. If you are not feeding, okay, who do you have in your life now that you are feeding, that you are raising for God? If there's nobody in your life that you are, you are particular about, that this person, I will let you know God well, but you don't love God. Jesus was the one, after he rose from the dead, this is one of the things he did. He met Peter and said, Peter, do you love me? Yeah. That's one. Hallelujah. Please sit down, otherwise you can hurt yourself. Yes. Era, sit. Good. Praise the Lord. Are there ushers in the church? Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, so you can be seated. Little Pastor China, you can handle it now. That's good. Praise the Lord. So let's all read verse 16 together. Ready? Go. He said to him again, uh -huh, the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Thou lovest me? And what did he say? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Mean, I don't go out again. The next verse, verse um, 17, ready? Go. He's. Uh -huh, the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou, thou lovest me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said, ah, I thought you were reading. Please read. Yeah. 
Let's give the Lord a shout of praise. As I was saying, if you love God, one of the things that you are going to do is that you are going to have people, whether you are a pastor or not, you are going to have people you are influencing for God. Yes, whether you are a pastor or not. This is a starter. To show that you are born again, you love God. Do you love me? Jesus is asking you, do you love me? If you love God, without being an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, a teacher, do you love God? The, the question is a basic question. Do you love God? And if the answer is yes, the litmus test, what will show that what you are saying is true is that there will be people that you are feeding for God. <laughs> amen and amen. amen. There will be people you are giving them the knowledge of God, the understandings of God. And I taught you that the feeding is knowledge and what? Understanding. That's the feeding. In, in the book of um, Jeremiah chapter 3 and the verse number 15. Jeremiah 3, 15. Please write it. When you come to church, you must have a Bible, a notebook, or an iPad, something you write with. Please, let's all read Jeremiah 3, 15 together. It's a Bible study, so ready, go. And I will give you pastors. I got, wait. I will give you what? Listen, God gives pastors. I'm telling you. God, he, give, he looks at you and gives you a pastor. And God said, I will give you pastors according to my heart. So there are pastors that are after God's heart. He looks at you and he wants you to go somewhere. He will give you a pastor. And that's why God brought me into your life. Yeah, by the grace of God. By the grace of God. Please be seated. So he said, I will give you pastors according to my heart. Listen, if God wants to help you, he brings a man or a woman into your life. And if the devil also wants to destroy you, he will bring a person into your life. Any which way, there's a person that the devil introduces. Some, of the, some, of, some people say, I've not met anybody. What about on social media? There are people who can show you bad things on social media. You have met somebody. Oh, yeah. So if God wants to help you, all you need is you just introduce one person. All of a sudden, you, you begin to love him. You are tilted towards him. Certain things you were doing that don't please God begin to leave. You begin to lose interest. And when it comes a time where you are now in your foundational stage and you even do something against the Lord, you feel bad. Whereas at first, it will be normal for you. It shows you are growing. An unbeliever does not feel bad for doing anything. What shows that the Holy Ghost is in you is when you feel bad when you do something wrong. It shows that the Holy Spirit is in you. If you do something that is bad and you don't feel bad, the Holy Ghost is not in you. You are, not, you are an unbeliever. But if you do something bad and you feel bad, the Holy Ghost is at work inside you. And he's convicting you of sin. Because that's one of the works of the Holy Ghost. So you see that at a point you don't want to do it again. And the addiction becomes broken. So God said, I will give you pastors. Let's go back to that. He said, and I will give you pastors according to my heart. What will they do? Which shall what? 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 feed you. And what is the feeding? With what? Knowledge and or with Banku and Tilapia. They will feed you with Oblayo, with Capitals, with rice balls, with rice pudding, with rice water. They will feed you with knowledge <laughs> and understanding. Praise the Lord. Continue for me. When they feed you, what happens? Please look at verse 16. Ready? Go. And it shall come to pass. When you are what? multiplied and what increased the land wait so when feeding is on in the process of time it comes to pass you begin to grow you begin to multiply you begin to increase in the spirit in your soul in your body in finances in all areas so he said when as you are feeding with knowledge and understanding it shall come to pass that when you are multiplied and increased in the land so when you submit yourself under teaching under feeding it comes to pass that you begin to multiply. It comes to pass you begin to increase. You see, in the process of time, something begins to happen. Am I communicating here? So I said that back to John 21. Now when you, you hear John 21, 15, you must know where we are going. Peter, do you love me? Thou lovest me. <laughs> and what, what shows Peter loved him? What did Jesus Christ say? If you love me, what must you do? The first one was what? Feed my lambs. Second one, feed my sheep. Third one, feed my sheep. Amen and amen. So when you are a pure lover of God, true lover of God, 
What shows you are a lover of God is when you are doing what? I'm not hearing you. I'm not hearing you. So ask two people around you, who are you feeding now? Now in your life, who are you feeding now with the word of God? Amen and amen. Who are you feeding? No, it's a serious question I'm asking you. Who is in your life now that you are helping to know God? Because many Christians, their, their friends around them, they only fool with them. And it ends it. Hey, let's chill. Hey, hey picture yourself here. That's all. Many Christians, it ends there. Suddenly so. Suddenly so, it ends there. There is no spiritual investment. There is no knowledge of God imparted. There is no understanding of the things of God that is imparted to their clique, to their friends, to their colleagues, to their acquaintances. No impartation of God's knowledge. And that's why many Christians, people can be around them, listen to this, flow with them, and the people who knew them, and they knew those people, will go to hell. Sadly so. Are there people around you that you have worked with for years that will go to hell if Jesus would come now or if they are to die now? Where would they go? Yet yeah, they are around you. You know them and they know you. Why? Because you really, really, really don't love God. Because if you love God, there's a feeding. He said, if you love me, feed. Feed people. Feed people. Who is in this church that is a new, a first timer that you are feeding, that you are leading by the hand into the work of God, into the things of the Spirit? Who is a friend in your life? When they need counsel and they come, you point them to the scripture. You don't point them to maybe a psychological um, knowledge or motivational quote you saw on the, on, on the internet. Socrates, oh, one of those things. Every time, you see, even your, your, you don't know that even your WhatsApp status is a pulpit. It's a platform. And the things you put there inform people about the God you serve or no. Oh, yes. And that's why if you're a Christian, you cannot just put anything on your WhatsApp status because you are teaching people. You see, everything you do is a seed you are sowing. It's a feeding. You are feeding the people who are, who are listening to you or watching you or feeding from you. What, what, whatever you put there, you are feeding people. You must decide that from today, even on your WhatsApp status or on your social media, you won't put about two things there without a scripture being inside it. You wake up every morning and you put a verse there. Am I communicating here? You put a verse, a Bible verse. Let them know you are a Christian. Don't hide it. If you hide it, you cannot feed people. What are you feeding? They don't know you are like that. So what are you come to feed them with? And that's why many people, if their friends put something on their status, they can't even correct them. Because they put more than that. You must be born again to reign again and to teach people again. You must influence people. When I was in Prempe College, when I was in the University of Ghana Business School, nobody influenced me for evil, for negative things. It can't happen. It can't happen. I'm the one who influences you. <laughs> I mean, and, and of course, I'll be first. Of course. After that one, you won't do it. You won't do it. Yeah, you don't do it. can't. Amen and amen. Amen. When I was praying during SSE, I said, God, give me eight days. And Lord, I'm asking for eight days for your glory. When it came, I had six days and two Bs. But you see, that alone was a good testimony to the glory of God. And that's why I tell the students here, learn. Because if you don't learn and you come and tell people that God is your God and they go and look at your results and it's E-E-F-F-D-D-D-E-F-F-F-J. You have even crossed from F to J. You, are, you have even gotten J in your results. When you say that God is my friend, they say, oh boy, oh boy. Who are you feeding now? He said, if you love me, feed my lambs. If you love me, feed my sheep. If you love me, feed my sheep. Now the question is, how do you train 
Today I'm going to end on that. How do you train? How do you feed people? How do you do it intentionally? On Sunday, I said be interested in people. Be interested in people. Be interested in people. But how, if you are now interested in people, how do you go about it? That's what we're going to look at now. Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5 from the verse number 16. Very important. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5 and the verse number 16. Downwards. We are reading 16 downwards. We read to a point. Now, if you want to memorize Bible verses, the place I will take you to is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. You see, when you read from, from 13 downwards, it's short, short. You think, if you look at verse 16, rejoice evermore. So when you say, memorize the scripture, one verse, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, rejoice evermore. Is, is that is as simple as that. Isn't it simple? Where do you verse a good three man? No, no. Amen. Can, okay, can you go to the previous verses so that we know the, the, the short, short, short things in the Bible? 1 Thessalonians 5, continue. Continue 16. That one is shorter. I want short, short. Let's all read 16. Ready, go. Rejoice evermore. 17. Pray with, everything is very easy. If you want to choose scripture, this is the place you must go to first. Because when it encourages you now, and you know you can say it, you can go to the longer ones, the longer verses. 18. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Isn't it also simple? It's simple. It's not like the rejoice of Ammon, but it's still simple. 19. Quench not the spirit. Yeah, simple verses. First Thessalonians 5. Very simple verses. 20. Despise not prophesying. Yes. Don't despise. Don't reject. Don't insult prophesying. Continue for me. 21. Prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. So you must learn. You must teach people to prove all things. Ubobi si upa o si ai. Prove all things. Ubobi kasi yanko numi ya o si ai. Prove all things. Ubobi kasi yanko numi sa ai. Let's go to a party. Ai. You don't prove things. You are too simple. No, you you are too easy to get. Why do you move ha? When anybody says any stupid thing, you will follow because you don't prove all things. I mean, when I was in USCJSS and I was in Pembe College, you cannot say something I'm not watching you. I'm processing it. I'm watching, I'm processing it. That's why no, no bad boy could come and tell me, let's go and smoke. You can't. With, with which mouth? No, with which mouth are you coming to stand before me and say that? Or let's go and take alcohol, smell off. Oh, it's 0 0.00%. With which mouth? You can't. You dare not. Because by the time you come, you are converted. When you come and you see me, or let's go and jump the wall. How? You won't get me. Why? Our generation, our youth, our adults, they really don't, they can't decide for themselves what is good. They don't prove all things. They don't hold fast. Hold fast to that which is good. When you prove all things, you know the good and the bad. Then you can prove that which is good and hold on to it. You hold fast. Continue for me. Abstain from all appearance of what? First, 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 Some things are not evil, but they appear to be evil. For example, you are in JSS or SS, and you are holding a lady's hand, a gentleman, or a lady, you are holding a, a gentleman. It's not bad, but it appears to be evil. You must abstain from it. Or maybe, or maybe 11 p.m., and you are working with the opposite sex. Working with the opposite is not evil, but the time makes it, it appears to be evil. You are not married, and you are on a crossing, and I do live in Mona Mona It appears. The Bible said that. The Bible didn't say only abstain from evil, abstain from what? All what? Appearance. So the thing is not evil, but it appears to be evil. Am I communicating here? Or maybe you are with your friends, you are not drinking alcohol, but all of them are taking alcohol, and you are taking coke. And you are in their midst. It, it, it does not look so evil, but it appears to be evil. Somebody, in fact, you don't smoke weed, and you are in the midst of weed smokers. If the police come, they won't ask who was smoking. They will arrest all of you. Because you appear to be part of those who are doing it. Am I communicating here? The Bible didn't just say flee from evil. Flee from appearances. So there are certain things that are not evil, but they appear to be evil. Am I communicating here? I said, am I communicating here? You must learn these things.
He will say, flee from all appearances of evil. Or maybe it is even afternoon and you are standing at the moment with a lady and both of you are very, very close like this. Mommy, please, please come. For me, it's my wife, so it's easy to do. Then, if there are no 30 years of marriage is no joke, please. Uh, in a moment, you are standing like this. Uh, you have seen Pastor Emmanuel before in a like that. <laughs> and you are standing there. Or maybe you are doing save the date. Some people, the way they do save the date. But why? why? And some people, when they are doing save the date, they put their hand there and it's closer to the breast. Please be very, very careful. Be careful. <laughs> it appears to be evil. He said, abstain, abstain from all appearance of evil. So by the time God is saying, abstain from all appearance of evil, and when it now comes to the real evil, that, that one, that one, eh, you must disappear. <laughs> yeah. you, 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 you must vanish. You see evil and you are vanished. It's like something is chasing you. You abstain. I'm closing the service very soon. You must abstain from every appearance of evil. God is talking to you tonight. I said God is talking to you tonight. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Amen and amen. amen. And verse 23. Yeah, 23. And this is where the training is. If you want to train, you want to feed people, your home cell members, your sheep, the people who are under you, you want to feed them, feed the lamb, feed the sheep, feed the sheep, if you love him. Are you all looking at it? Let's all read it like a choir, loud and clear, ready, go. Uh -huh. Sanctify you wholly, and I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. First Thessalonians 5, what? Verse 23. He said that I pray God, this is Paul talking to the Thessalonian church. The people of Thessalonica. And he told them that I pray God as I'm raising you, as I'm training you, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless that means i want your spirit to be blameless i want your soul to be blameless i want your body to be blameless <laughs> if you want to raise people three things you must do be interested number one in your spirit two be interested in their souls three be interested in their body number one be interested number one be interested in their what spirit two be interested in their what soul three be interested in their physical lives in their bodies number one be interested in their spiritual lives so spirit means their spiritual life number two be interested in their soul in their social lives number three be interested in their physical lives can i get a loud amen on that a louder amen on that praise the lord are you listening paul said that i pray that your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless because your spirit can be contaminated your soul can be contaminated and your body can be contaminated so if you're a human being, Joe, come. Jerry, come. Ah, today you're you a high chapel man. Pastor Odenke, come. Hallelujah. There is no name Jesus. I want <laughs> This is your spirit. If you're a human being, this is your spirit, this is your soul, and this is what? your body <laughs> 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 
The moment you become born again, please, are you listening? Are you watching? What is born again is your spirit. Please, when you get born again, which one is born again? Is this one born again? No. Is this one born again? No. Your soul is not born again. When you are born again, it's your spirit that is born again. But your soul, what is inside your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect, your feelings. They are all in your soul. They are all inside your soul. Your will, your intellect, your emotions, your feelings, your imaginations, they are all in your soul. Then this is your flesh. As for the flesh, it's not born again at all. It's not saved at all. So when you get born again, your spirit is saved, but your flesh is not saved. But your soul is being saved. It's, it's a process. This one is a process. But this one is complete. But this one is a process. Why? That's why the Bible says that you renew your mind with the word of God. So anytime you are studying your Bible, you are helping the soul. You are renewing it. So for example, before you got born again, pornography are taking hold of you. The more you study the scriptures, your soul is being renewed. And the thing is disappearing. But as for this flesh, don't put confidence in it. The flesh is a bad boy. So maybe you have clothes from church. Your spirit man is very excited. Your soul has been renewed with the word of God. And maybe before you, get, you got born again, you went into pornography. And you go home and your flesh is telling you, today we are going to watch porno. Please don't forget, these are not three individuals. So this is one person. One person. But the main person is your spirit. So you are not a body. As you are here, like that, you are not a body. The real you is which one? I'm not hearing you preach with me. The real you is what? Okay, when you get a letter, which one is important? The, the envelope or the, the letter? Which one is important? Uh, please, the envelope or the letter? Which one is important? The letter. Why? Because the letter contains the information the person is trying to send you. The envelope is just a covering. So, your body is just the envelope. The real you is your spirit. So, when you go to the mortuary, what we call mortuary, when you go to the mortuary, there are a lot of bodies that are lying down there. But why is that they cannot get up and move? The real them, that is the spirit, is gone. Am I communicating here? The real you, so a lot of bodies, but no movement. Because if the spirit goes, the body can be lying down there like that. The Bible said that the body without the spirit is dead. In the book of James. He said the body without the spirit is dead. So if the, the, the body says, I'm going to watch Puno, what do you think the spirit will say? Uh, I, want to, I want to teach with you. What does the spirit say? No. no. Why? The spirit is born again. But this guy is not what? So, when your spirit says, I will not watch, what will your body say? I will watch. Your spirit will say, what? I will not watch. There will be a fight. That's what the Bible says that the flesh and the spirit, they fight against each other. That's what your Bible says in Galatians chapter 5. He said the spirit and the flesh, they war against each other. They war, they war, they war. So, they are warring against each other. Praise the Lord. So, the Bible simply says that the flesh lasteth after the spirit. And the spirit lasteth against the flesh. In Galatians chapter 5. Look at it. The, for the flesh lasteth against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. So the spirit has its lasts. The last of the spirit. The, 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 the spirit longs for the things of God. The things that please God. But the flesh also lasts for worldliness. Worldly things and bad things. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So when this one does not want to do. And this one wants to do. What happens? They go to this guy, the soul. So I'm showing you the processes that happens in your mind when you are at the brink of temptation. This guy, they go to this guy and they'll say, will we do or will we not do? Both of you guys, will we do or will we not do? If your mind has been renewed by the word of God, what do you think will happen? Your soul will join your spirit. If you have been studying the scriptures and exposed to the word of God, your soul will join what? So it will be two against one. Then all of a sudden, you are going to win. You are going to win over sin. If you cannot beat them, what, what must you do? So you just, just join them. So that you are safe. You have overcome the temptation like that. But if the soul has been starved from hearing the word and studying the Bible and going after spiritual things, the soul may be only attending parties, watching movies, 
only among worldly friends, ungodly counsel. What will happen is that the soul will join which one? The spirit will say, no, no, no. And so, even though the spirit does not like, at that point in time, it will be where the body is, so it is there. So when you finish, you see that your spirit feels contaminated. Am I communicating here? Please come back again. Now, there are times it looks as if your soul has been renewed with the word of God. Your spirit does not want to do it, but looks like the desires of the flesh become stronger. And even though this is two against one, this one has been, it's like all of a sudden it's macho. I hope you know that a huge macho man can beat two human beings, can put them together and beat them. Haven't you watched Chinese movie? One person can beat about 10 people. <laughs> Even with the hand at the back. This one will come here. So, some looks like the flesh has become so empowered and, and the spirit does not want to do it. At that point in time, you are trying and yet the flesh wants to win. Do you know at that point what happens if you want to win? Should I tell you what you should do? You don't want it, so I'll stop. I said, should I tell you what you should do? That is the point you must talk with the Holy Spirit. So at that point, the Holy Ghost comes to join. It's like, if you, if, you like, if, if you like, come. At that point in time, you begin to win because the Holy Ghost sits upon your flesh. Sits upon your flesh. Oh, yes. Now, I'm, now please stand there again. And I'm saying that this is one person. And if you want to raise people, be interested in what? Your what? Yeah, spirit, be interested in what? And be interested in what? That's what Paul is talking about in 1 Thessalonians 5.23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming. That means till Jesus comes, I am making sure you are correct. Till Jesus comes to the rapture. I want to ask you a question as we are seated here. Who is in your life now? That you are making sure that the person is correct till Jesus comes. Who? Who? So be interested in your spiritual lives. When you are interested in your spiritual life, you, there are certain questions you ask. For example, there must be somebody every day you ask, have you prayed today? Have you studied your Bible today? If you are ashamed to ask people, you don't love God. Or if you love me, you must feed. And one of the feedings, praise the Lord, one of the feedings you must be interested in is Bible. Please, can you lift your Bible and let me see? Lift your Bible and let me see your Bible. Lift your Bible. Lift your Bible. Amen and amen. You, you, must, you must have a Bible. Ask somebody, where's your Bible? Where's your Bible? Where's your Bible? Amen. Please be seated, praise the Lord. You can put it down. Please can put it down. Amen and amen. amen. You must check their Bibles. You must check their prayer lives. Every morning, please, are you listening? Yes, sir. There are people you must send WhatsApp messages to and ask them, have you prayed? Have you studied your Bible? It might be something you are doing because it, it informs you about their spiritual lives. Amen and amen. It, they are indicators of their spiritual work. If somebody does not study the Bible every day, does not pray every day, their tangent, their level in the spirit is dropping. It is dropping. Why? Because the Bible says, man shall not live by what? Bread alone. Matthew 4, 4. But by what? Every word. That. 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 What does proceed mean? It means it's something that is happening. So it, it's not the preceding word. It's the proceeding word. That means there must be a word for the day. He said, give us this day our daily bread. It wasn't just fiscal food. It's also the spiritual food. Because you also live not by bread alone, but you also live by the word. Amen and amen. That means if somebody is not being fed by the Bible every day, the person does not have nutrients in the spirit. So in the spirit, the person very soon, the person is going to have spiritual kwashioko. So somebody can be big body, hey, hey, what are you talking about? But in the spirit, I remember one day when I was preaching on Legon campus, there was a thick, tall gentleman that was there. Very thick, tall. And I was preaching. When I was ministering, the Holy Ghost and the grace of God came upon the atmosphere. And when the Holy Ghost came, the thick, tall person 
all of a sudden came close and lifted his hands and he fell down like that and one day I called him that we should pray and we started praying for one hour when we prayed for 10 minutes oh yeah and yet take to no if you like let me bring a macho man here like never or any macho man and I say let's pray then we start speaking in tongues it will get to a point you see that they cannot go again if they are not spiritual if their spirit man has not been built they say oh, Papa, you are tired please if you want to build your home cell member you want to build your friend you must always ask important questions how is your world huh and how is what again if you are not raising them in that regard you are not interested in your spiritual lives so some of you don't ask your home cell members or your friends their prayer about their prayer lives and their bible said in a consistent way i'm not just talking about once a while in a consistent way amen and amen yeah. every day have you studied your bible every day have you prayed listen even some of the pastors here and lady pastors here if by chance we are to talk in the day i ask them have you studied your bible have you prayed even at their level amen and amen, amen. praise the lord Hallelujah. even missionaries i've given them things to read books to read oh yes when it comes to raising people it comes with intentionality so why is said that no one here deliberator you cannot raise people receive the grace to raise people now please be seated somebody can also be reading the bible praying and also of course fasting coming to church checking on their church attendance on their soul winning that one is here somebody can also be praying reading the bible and yet their soulish life is also not doing well how why because people just read the bible but some don't also meditate it's meditation that touches the soul if you don't know i'm telling you and because of that somebody can become the church consistent with the prayer life and yet maybe a lady is disturbing him or a gentleman is playing with the, her emotions so there are certain church ladies some gentlemen are playing with their emotions there are certain church gentlemen some ladies are playing with their emotions and it, look, it looks like they cannot do anything about it and i was talking to a lady mommy and i were talking to a particular lady we we're down there those years and we said she came to tell us something we said leave the person she said i can't and we said emotions so what did we do we began to correct it by meditation by counseling by being interested in that aspect of her life as if you're a shepherd you must be interested in people's lives otherwise you cannot really raise people you can't and over the years you see that everything began to become correct as we began to align her thoughts towards the things of god am i communicating here yes, you know some christians who read the bible and pray but they cannot even control their lust towards a person everlast wonder last yes so the gentleman is beating her but it's like Oh, pastor, I can't stop the relationship. Mommy, do can't stop the relationship. Hey, Mommy, I cannot stop the relationship. So, you see, if and such a person, you think that, oh, my shadow, I am on shadow. We are good, but we are on the phone. Long time, long time. We are not on the phone. We are not on the phone. Play with his heart. And he cannot do anything about it. She cannot do anything about it. Like I can't say certain things. Oh. Many years ago, Mommy and I were there, and the person said, a person was, was in SS. SS said that when I see him, I don't know what to do to myself. When this office was there, there was a gentleman said, I don't know what to do to myself. He said, we, 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 we went six. 
So if you have a cell member and you think that he has come to cell meeting or a church member come and you, 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 you are and you are you are not interested and you think that everybody is fine brother not everybody is fine i'm telling you emporium not everybody is fine you think that they are quiet they, they don't know anything what what they know you must be interested in your spiritual lives and not just that in their soulish lives be interested tell somebody be interested be interested be interested amen and amen, amen. emporium you may be sitting in prayer of the lord i'm closing the service on my time oh my, my time is almost up i have about five minutes more Amen. <laughs> but if you are able to train them in meditation, even the Bible, how to study it, it will now start overflowing into their emotional lives. You see, they begin to have a sense of control. At first, when a negative emotion came, they wouldn't have been able to do anything about it. But now it looks like, oh, I can control this. Because you have intentionally raised them. You have, you have been interested in their lives. They can do something about it. They're not only that, you must be interested in which part again? Their bodies. Their bodies. That's why you win a soul. You must help them even how to on how to dress. If it's a gentleman, it's like the gentleman does not know how to dress well, does not know how to. It's like the dress is dirty, it's like only one dress, only one. If you have money, be interested. Just make sure you get a shirt for them. Get a nice shirt. Say, please wear the shirt for me. When the person wears the shirt, and it's not iron. One day I bought some shirts for somebody. Person came and the dresses were not ironed. And I said that now you've got a new dress. The next thing, do you know how to iron? Person said yes. I said, so why is your dress not ironed? I was interested. And I, I think I told Pastor James or somebody that teach him how to iron. Please sit there, praise Lord. Because in your time, you have to ask One, two, we are Christian, you pray and you study your Bible. Your emotional life is okay, but physically you are not presentable. That one too is wrong. So when you are training somebody, you must be interested in all that area or all those areas. You, you, and when the person now irons, you now check the color. Say, Kai, the color was not good. You check this part, say this part is, is not well ironed. You check, you check sometimes where the button is, that line. People don't normally iron. So you say that it's a line way, no? What to be a but a one more. So you begin to tell them that learn how to iron. Sometimes you look at the hair and you say, ah, uti abon chiriwa, chiriwa. You didn't comb your hair. There was one son of mine, every time he came, and he said, abon chiriwa, chiriwa. Every time, he said, again. One day he was there and I bought a hairbrush. I said, take it, young man. Take this hairbrush. No, one son of my every time he comes closer to me, I didn't like the smell. He was there and I bought deodorant and perfume. I said, take it. You know, I am interested. When, when you are training people, you must be interested. One son of my when he, st he was talking to me, I, I saw that the, the smell was not good from his mouth. I bought Pepsodent. We don't just buy Bible, Emporium. We also buy Pepsodent. I bought present and brush because there's also a brush you use that your mouth will still smell. And there's a brush you use and you can clean your tongue very well. Clean very well. It's like you are interested. He said that your spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. So your body must also be blameless. Oh boy, I said brush, no turning your to smokers or VIP brush. The chin and the room, the water, the water, water, sent in a no more to a cent in America. I say, one true water, water, one she shall yeah, 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 one more true water, not she Amen and amen. So, when the person you see, your, the body must be blameless. So, you, you, you see that you, 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 you are helping the person to have a nice mouth odor, you are helping the person's armpit to smell nice. Amen and amen. Help the person to bath well. Tell the person that, hey, 
Today it didn't bath. So next time bath well. Because sometimes the smell is not about the perfume. If the person has not bathed and still applies perfume, we call it smelling from under. Sometimes if you are share I say the hair brush and also Ottoman is what you also show them how to brush the hair. You say when it is front, you, you look at the your, the way your hair goes. If it's front, you brush here. You check here, you brush to the back. One day I gave somebody a brush. I say brush your hair. Person said like this. I say, no, 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 no. We don't brush the hair like that. <laughs> you must know where every wave goes to. Amen and amen. Sometimes, you know, I can look at somebody's physical outlook and determine what they are going through spiritually. Yes, it's part of prophetism. You look at their physical outlook. Then you look at what, it can point to what they are going through spiritually. Am I communicating here? Yeah. One day I saw a gentleman, I told mommy, he's not okay. He is not okay. The Holy Ghost had not told me anything yet, but I knew he, he's not okay. Mommy said, why? Why you say? I said, I know he's not okay. Then I said to the protocol, please call, call the gentleman for me. Now let me use prophecy now. I'm going to use the prophetic now. When the person came, I told the person, when I was looking at the person's face, when I look at your face, I can, I mean, just know what is happening. I, don't, I won't tell you everything. One day I was telling, I was asking somebody a question, the person was lying, and I was looking at the person like that. I said, wow, wow, wow. Really? The person said, yes, so boy, it does. I said, yes, it's true. You do like that. I knew it was like but I was also helping the person to lie more. I said, it's true. You should do like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The next day, I called the person on the phone. I said, why? They said, oh, Papa, please. Sir. There are some people I, I just agree. I don't say anything. But after this particular one, I called. I said, why? But I don't have time. Some of you, if you have gone to lie, lie and go. It's as simple as that. But you see, this one I called. Why? I said, Papa, please, why? I said, why, why? He said, why do you lie to me? I said, I think I don't know you lied said oh papa i'm sorry i was afraid to tell you i said no you know me if you tell me i will rebuke you and correct you and i will let you do the right thing but what can i do to you but what at all can i do amen and amen. amen the person from that time did not lie again but there are others i didn't call and from that time too <laughs> amen and amen you must be interested in their bodies. One day I saw a Joey when he came from a dying. I saw, I said, hey, why, why is your hair like that? I said, go and shave your hair. And I gave him money to go and shave. He said, very, very important. Joey, how many, uh, when you came from a dying? Yes. I thought, I don't like your hair. I'm, I'm interested. You, after service, we will talk about you. <laughs> oh, I said my time is up and you are still making me talk. Amen and amen. Some of the ladies who don't know how to dress, show your stomach, show your tie, show your breast. When they become born again, you must start holding your hands to tell them and teach them how to dress. Now, certain dresses, if you're a Christian, it's not a church matter. You don't even wear it and go out with it you know some christian ladies when they are going out they have what they wear when they are coming to church they have what they wear you tell them no it must be the same when you are going out anywhere human beings are there church to human beings dress well one day when i came to dummy fresh and i was going on evangelism i saw one of the ladies who is a member of the church was going to fetch water somewhere and i'd want a very short show your stomach and a very short shorts short shorts and was going on. So Papa, where did you go? Say And I was like, "Hand on, punch him." Come on, and I'm on the penny hole. Hmm, the And go for my shares. Who is your say mu? And the door so. I cannot bond you. I would eat tea to say. I go my brother boom the door so. And I'm saying, God forgive you. Come on, 
Someone said, I'm not going to change it. Oh, no, no, I'm not going to change it. In your area, it is not animals that are there. Human beings are also there. You can, you can offend them with lust. Can't bless anyhow. And you have also lifted your hands like that and you are holding the bucket like that. We just want to watch that. Hey, you can't see one more and watch that, you see. I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Amen and amen. You must train people in their spiritual lives, in their soulish lives, and where? In their bodies. Because some people have been asking, Papa, how do we raise them? Today I'm teaching you. I'm teaching how to raise people. Raise them. And it's something you are always asking, especially their spirit. This one is once in a while. When you see you have corrected a particular thing, you wait and watch because you are a shepherd. You must be diligent to know the state of your flock. If you love me, you feed. One day I saw one of my sons and I was telling mommy that I have to talk to this my son. Mommy said, why? I said, because when he's doing things, he's supposed to do things. It's like maybe at this next stage of life, this is what you must do. And this is it. I said, you must be fast to do it. Yeah. For example, maybe at this time you should have done this. Maybe you should know how to buy provisions and budget for provisions. Know how to save like this. Know how to do this. I've called many of my sons to show them how to save. I even draw budget with them. What is the, 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 the work of a pastor drawing a budget? The, the Lord called me to draw budgets. But I am interested. Once you are a shepherd, you are interested. If you are not interested, you are not a shepherd. Or even we, mommy and I, we ask people, have you eaten? Have you eaten well? We've been people's feeding, not only spiritual, physically. We are interested. Because When somebody is hungry and they even come and you say lift up your, your, your hands and they are hungry, it's not their fault. They are hungry. So when they are about to live, then it's like it's going like this. On your mommy will tell. Say now, oh yeah, the man found my mother. And you come to dinner. And you come water. Praise the Lord. Please take your offerings. Take your offerings. Please go.